Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Today I wanted to talk to you about some important court dates that are going down in the 2A with some cases that we need to be aware of that could possibly be cool or possibly be bad. Uh, the first case is September 7th. It's the frame and receiver rule. That's the vendor stock v. Garland one. This is the case where um, they... The Third Circuit, I think it is, or the Fifth Circuit, might have even been the Ninth. Anyway, there was a court case, uh, th this court case, where they were trying to find, change the definitions of what a frame and a receiver, and then they added the definition, or added to that definition, the part where you had to deal with uh, parts. Okay, so they were trying to declare parts as part of a receiver or a machine gun or anything like this, and the particular case or particular court that I was talking about want to talk about is the one in Texas. This is where Texas, and I've talked about this on this podcast before, the case is in Texas or was in Texas and the, the Texas court of, uh, had said basically the ATF didn't have merit, they, didn't, they screwed this up, and they stayed the case and we won. Well, they went to the Supreme Court, remember this? And the Supreme Court sided with them to, to finish hearing the case out. But uh, when I say sided with them, sided with the ATF. And the ATF complained to the Supreme Court. So they overruled that temporary injunction, which would have allowed frames and receivers to just be sold as is and parts and everything else, um, because that was the direct win. So what they've done is they've uh the supreme court said we got to wait till that case is fully seen they got to go through and argue it september 7th they're going to so tomorrow they're going to be uh, arguing that case coincidentally it's my son's birthday so should be my youngest son so it should be in our favor october 25th okay this is one i didn't know very much about but i i looked it up it's coons versus platkin and what this is, a CCW, it's a New Jersey case. And of course, New Jersey doesn't want you to carry guns, period. But New Jersey doesn't want you to carry guns in certain places. And this case is in their Supreme Court, or in their circuit, Supreme Court circuit. And this has the potential to cascade or give us case law to allow us to carry guns anywhere in states like we have in New Mexico, where we need to, or where we should be able to carry a gun, unless it's private property. Private property, then they can post it and say you can't carry it in there. Okay, November 6th, Reese v. ATF. So this is a pistol ban, a federal pistol ban on anyone under the age of 21. And this one, if this gets overruled, what that means is that where they've been trying to push that age of 21 to purchase any firearm, this will solidify it 100% that they can buy pistols as well as what they can for long guns. So this is a big deal for anyone. Think about it in terms of if you have to be forced, if we ever instituted the draft and these people, uh, these poor kids that have to go fight, shouldn't they have the right to have, to, to carry, to be able to carry and protect their kids? Um, I know a lot of 18 year olds, um, that have kids um i was responsible enough at 18 year old 18 years old i believe to carry a gun i believe my my middle son um is old enough to carry a, a pistol and you know what the way the town's been going lately uh he was accosted at a skate park when he was just there skating and a guy approached him um brandished a knife and he and his friends, there was enough of them to kind of stave off any kind of attack. But still, I would have felt a hell of a lot more comfortable with him having a gun at the time. November 8th is Oakland Tactical versus Howell Township. Now, this is one I think is very interesting. What this is, is Oakland Tactical had wanted to open a gun, uh, a shooting range in town. And Howell said that we couldn't do that. Now, with that, what that means is that there, this has potential for places where, that are, this is in, New, in California. Um, so what this has the potential of doing is 
and I apologize for that. That's one of my listeners, Dexton, um, and one of my best friends, and my brother, who just tried to text me. So that was the alert. I didn't get the chance to mute that before I started this podcast, and we're live. So, Dex, if you're listening live, you just got on here by proxy. But what this was is this has the potential to allow places that are trying to restrict you from exercising your rights by going after places you can actually go to exercise your right to exist. So if you're in like Oakland, California, and they're not, there's no place to shoot, these places were trying to, the, the Oakland Tactical was trying to find a way to give you a place that's safe and legal to shoot at. And the township said no. November, November 3rd is Balcom versus Jackson, and I may have got that name wrong, but it's a Georgia ban on 18 to 21 year olds on CCW. Like the previous case, Reese versus ATF, this has the potential to help those people that are those young adults who are adult to allow them to carry, legally carry, not just be able to purchase the gun, but to be able to carry it and get their CCW. Now, the last thing I wanted to cover, which is kind of a longer subject, has to do with what I've been seeing in the news. Now, it doesn't take you long to look at the crime statistics and the crime that we've seen Even in New Mexico, northwest New Mexico, we usually are a quiet town. And we're usually seeing, we're seeing an uptick in crime. And we're seeing an uptick in people carrying guns and perpetrating crimes with guns. And I believe that a gun in the hand is better than one in the safe. But that is only one part of this. Now, when you have big celebrities coming out in the conservative spaces and in general coming out and talking about a federal registry and how bad that is. Okay, so what they're trying to do is backdoor a federal gun registry, which they already have, the ATF already has one sort of, and they shouldn't have it, period. But just because they shouldn't have it doesn't mean the government won't do it. Now, what we need to do is have a concerted effort to fight this And the other news stuff I watch is foreign events. And specifically what I'm going to get into is the Ukrainian war. Now, most of us in the 2A community are tired of seeing our arms and our weapons and our money, our tax, our treasure going to another country because there's no real vested interest in that. At least that's what we see. We've seen enough war we see no you know we've seen what happens when we give all these things to other countries like Afghanistan we left almost a billion dollars worth of uh, equipment and firearms that we can't even own there for the Taliban but in Ukraine if you remember at the start of that war they were handing out guns to civilians to defend themselves against an incoming army now i have heard a conspiracy theory recently which I totally discount because I I don't believe it and one of the people that's spreading it is very prone to spreading those QAnon type uh, conspiracies which are total bullcrap don't get suckered into that stuff but what they were talking about was um, troops being in Washington foreign troops being in Washington in the in the forest and that these people were being chased away uh, that had run into these guys. Now, is it possible? Possibly, um, because Washington's a very open state, and it it has a very uh, high percentage of Asians and other other illegal immigrants or illegals from uh, other countries. But what I'm thinking of is as Ukraine's getting their ass handed to them and don't let you don't let what they're saying on mass media right now on mainstream media fool you they're getting their ass handed to them okay they won around a, a, a city called Robotny uh, which if you look on the map it's in the Donbass area and what the Russians are doing 
and I'm pretty positive of this, is they're sucking them down so that they can get the best of the cream of the crop of all the stuff we sent there. All the new tanks, because we didn't send them in mass, because we can't, because that would disarm us. And neither could NATO. But they're all those brand new pieces of equipment, or not brand new pieces of equipment, most of it's stuff we're dis discarding. We're changing up, we're, we're updating our military for the new posture we're assuming. Um, they're waiting for those armored vehicles to come in. So to that what's called a salient so it is a big penetration down but they're basically surrounded on the sides okay now the russians have reinforced the donbass with not one not two not even three but four layers of defenses around this area in the donbass okay and then they've kept reinforcing it and it's caused a stalemate for the Ukrainians so that they can't continue to fight to get those areas back. Now what I think that the Russians are doing and what I've talked to other um, military guys is they're drawing them in and allowing them to get that far so that they can destroy those new reinforcements, those new trainees, and all that new tank, the new armor, the new weapons that we have given them uh, as as countries as NATO has given them and it made me think about this would be one of those things decisive things that would cause them to lose the war now I already think that that's going to happen and that they're going to have to go back to being an insurgency like what happened in Afghanistan which kicked us out you know the the mightiest military on planet Earth had to leave Afghanistan because it become became untenable. You can't keep having losses one and two here for years and five and ten and twenty and so on before we, the main force decides this isn't right and the political tides at home for whatever country it is decides they need to pull their troops back out. I believe that'll happen to Russia eventually, but not before they take all of Ukraine. And as simply put, Ukrainians are corrupt. We all know this. We've seen the stuff that's been going on with Joe Biden and and the Biden family, crime family, and all the stuff that's gone on there. But it makes me think about what would happen here in the United States. Now, us having the Second Amendment, we wouldn't have to be handing out guns to civilians. That step is already there. We should be able to repel troops coming onto our own shores by creating that insurgency instantly. And with that, I'm saying that is the key reason, whether it's a foreign government or it's our government, being able to stand up for our country. And as much as I have issues with what's going on in Washington and the federal government because of what they're trying to do to us. And it's not just been this administration. I think it was the last administration, to be honest, because if it wasn't for the last administration, we would still be having to, uh, we wouldn't be having to fight these battles like Mock v. Garland or Vanderstock v. Garland. We wouldn't have to be fighting for keeping our basic rights because they're trying to get rid of it and if you don't believe me look at what they're trying to do with that federal gun registration or the backdoor disarmament scheme when it comes to trying to get you to not be able to sell a firearm to someone that doesn't seem like a big deal because most of us don't sell our guns once we get them but think about what they're trying to do there. They're trying to get you in trouble legally or try to get you after the fact so that they can go after you as a gun owner one at a time. And when people like Glenn Beck, who usually is very political in the political spaces, he sees that like I do, we know that it's percolating that he's the one that sees these things in the global spectrum 
But we, in the 2A, we've known this for a long time. That's why we've been fighting so hard. Now, I firmly believe that Trump realizes that's a bad mistake he made um, and that maybe he would remedy it. I'm looking forward to getting rid of Biden, first off, because Biden is the problem right now, or more specifically, his uh, Department of Justice is. We need to be very cognizant of what's going on. So that's why I give you these updates on these court cases to watch and listen to, and I will update you because that's what New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union's mission statement is, is to keep our community tactical and to do that by informing you on all the overreach that the government's trying to do, but also to bring in the cool stuff because this stuff gets boring, you know? And having to, what you're seeing in the, in the gun tube space right now is that they are continually regurgitating this type of stuff. But you're seeing people that normally aren't political that are just into guns, like Tim from Military Arms Channel and Mike from Mr. Guns and Gear and even Iraq Vet 8888. Uh, those guys, when they start coming out and they're starting to warn you, you know, and when it's so bad that Brandon Herrera decides to jump into the Senate race so that he can stop this uh, rhino guy. And, you know, again, I'm not a political party guy anymore. I used to be a Republican. You can hear that in some of my leanings. I'm still very much in the camp of trying to conserve our country. But I don't believe conserving our country involves those two political parties anymore. And why I say that is because you've seen time after time that voting for one and then voting for another is consistently just regurgitating the same crap. Because you have people like Mitch McConnell that will get in and turn coat on us. You have tons of senators and reps on both sides of the aisle that will say, hey, we're here to protect your Second Amendment. And the minute one of those things comes into question where they have to stand their ground, they cave or flake like a biscuit. And when I'm seeing the stuff that's happening around the world, in the news, not just domestically, because that's more so what I care about, but I pay attention to what's going on in the world. And seeing what's happening in Ukraine, seeing what the Russians are capable of doing. And if you don't know how the Russians fight, the Russians don't fight like Americans. What I mean like that is that we use what's called the combined arms team. We use air, sea, and land to combine our forces and our weapon systems so that we own the battle space. Well, the Russians aren't capable of doing that because they've never been able to keep up the air power enough because it was too expensive to where they could own the airspace. So they fight artillery wars, and artillery wars are long, bloody, and brutal. But in addition to this, the, as much as I hate to say this about the Russians, the Russians have a history since World War II of raping and pillaging every town that they've ever taken. And that's because what they do is they do this to demoralize the people so that they can subject them to whatever whim they want and they end up becoming their sub sub basically okay so i don't ever want to see that happen to our country either from our government or from any other government trying to land any other country trying to land on our shores this is why we have to keep the country tactical and we have to allow us the american citizens to be able to defend our country like Share, subscribe, be great.